What is up, everybody? Back with another pair of iconic low heat. Low heat, but very iconic. There's a lot of historical importance to it, and uh, I'm excited to open this. Excited that I got a pair, and if anyone's watching this at all, I thank you for watching it because at this point, by the time this video is uploaded, there's been you know, hundreds and hundreds of unboxing videos, there's been articles written, there's been a lot said, written, phot photographed, videoed about this pair and you've clicked on mine and you've watched thus far, so I, I appreciate that. Uh, while you're doing me favors, please uh, hit the subscribe button, it's free makes me feel good and I'd appreciate that. It takes you one second. You did it. You, I mean, it costs you nothing. I know sometimes people are stingy with their subscribes, but like, you know, it's, I do sneaker reviews, sneaker unboxings for the most part. So if you like that stuff, that's, you're not going to be bombarded with uh, videos. So anyways, here they are. Got this pair off a online raffle, um, from feature shouts to feature. I enter all their raffles, and for the most part, I've never hit on any high heat. I only ever hit on low heat from them, but this um, this has sold out. Uh, so I, I got the notification that I got these, I won these um, prior to the sneakers drop, and so I didn't enter the sneakers drop, and this was the only pair that I got. I was a little wary of entering too many raffles, just like, you know, the ones back in what what they released 2019, you know, they don't they didn't sell out immediately for a ton of money. Like I, just the sneaker market's down and everything. So I didn't want to be saddled with too many pairs. Like doubling up's fine. This is this is a, a a classic and a great shoe to have in your rotation and so having two pairs would be great. Um if I could afford that or had the space, but I didn't want like three pairs, four pairs not to be able to unload these. So anyways, hence why I only got one. We'll start with the box. This is, um, I feel like this has become Nike's signature thing uh, for anything where they retro something in its original fashion, where they're trying to return to the specs of the shoe. So any of the lost and found, the Air, um, the Air Jordan 3 Cement reimagined, uh, and then this one, the Nike Air Max 1 86 OG. Anything where they're returning to the sh the shoe to as its original form uh they do this but then they don't do it to the packaging so that's a little interesting uh with the what was it the air max 90 infrared that i got there they did the og packaging and the shoe itself was like kind of in its original form but not completely so um, it seems like this, they don't care as much about the packaging. They want to tell a story with the packaging and with a the shoe, they'll try to maintain its, um, OG or original form. So the, the official colors for this are white and university red of all the different reds that they have. I got these size 11 half. That's my size. Uh, I do think the box is cool. I'm a little conflicted. Sometimes I just wish they would do the original specs of the box too. Like, you know, keep it all in line. Maybe change up one thing, include an insert, change up the paper maybe. Um, but now this box is an homage to the Air Max One as you can see through the box and you got the kind of the, the air signature air pocket look right there. I do think that's cool. Very cool. And it's got the, the air, air red. It's kind of like it's worn through, worn through and, and and revealing the red layer underneath. So uh, I like it. Cool little, cool little touch. We have the striped paper inside. And now for the grand unveiling. Man. This is just a great shoe. What's great about it is it screams retro from this like uh, mesh nylon upper and it's designed big midsole, but it's, I mean, you know, retro is, is in, it's popular right now, but it's also at the same time, such a clean shoe. You can see why this has held up over the years. It's um, sometimes if you do things really well the first time, they're like, obviously it'll be popular then and then they'll hold nostalgia and then they'll become iconic. And then anytime anything's iconic, it it's, stands the test of time. So that's kind of like the, the order of things. But man, 
It is a great, great shoe. I mean, you kind of notice the the indentations here in the midsole and the the divot in the. I think this is all synthetic upper. I don't. I think this is synthetic nubuck. I don't think there's any leather in here. But anyways, in the synthetic nubuck around the mud guard, so for for the the shoe to bend, it, cre it creases right there. So just the little subtle things you don't like us as non designers, you know, don't notice. But like when you really examine it, you can tell why they're there. This was designed as a running shoe, and I think a lot of you know the stories behind this. Nike did a cool little piece on sneakers with Tinker Hatfield, and they had a longer sit-down interview with him. Um, many, many unboxings have been done, uh, and stories have been told about these. So uh, I'm going to just hit the highlights. If you don't know, I think maybe there's some of you that don't know. I, I watch, consume and watch a lot of these videos, these YouTube videos and these things that Nike puts out. So I know not everyone does. So if you've heard some of this before, apologize, stick with it. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to put these on foot. I'm going to um, uh, talk about the price and this and, you know, the context of these within a sh sneaker collection. So there's more to talk about, but I'm going to hit on a couple couple historical points really quick just for those who don't know and um, I think you might appreciate so Tinker Hatfield designed the Air Max one it was one of his first big shoes to design this was prior to him coming and and designing the um, Jordan 3 which he's known for the Jordan 3 on through however many Jordans um, this was his first big sneaker design project with Nike they wanted to the the competition in the 80s was heating up and no longer were there just the technology inside their shoes and their bold colors and and nike swoosh was not just you know it wasn't enough to compete they needed to take push the envelope and so they tasked tinker with pushing the envelope they had the best in their minds technology how can we show that off it's not just function anymore we need to you know we need to um look cool as well he took a trip to paris um Tinker is started in architecture, and I think he actually was tasked with designing some Nike buildings on campus in Oregon at first, back in the early 80s, and then he moved over to shoe design and sneaker design. And he saw the Pompidou building in France, which kind of has the stairs on the outside and everything is on the outside. So that gave him the idea of exposing the air inside. Now the airbag is not, was not new for this model. Air had been in, uh, air units had been in Nike since I think 78, the air tailwind. And of course the air Jordan one, um, and the, um, various other shoes had airbags just always enclosed. This is the first, this was Tinker's idea to expose the air based on the inspiration from the Pompidou building in Paris. And I think that's very um, appropriate with a new age designer, um, uh, you know, rest in peace, Virgil Abloh. He was an architect and an engineer first and foremost, uh, he, he would say. And he also, you know, here's the roots of deconstruction right here in this Nike Air Max 1. Like long before Union deconstructed the Jordan 1 and Virgil was deconstructing things on the 10, uh, long before that, and, and I know there's been other designers prior to them doing deconstructed work. I'm just saying it. things really popped off for deconstruction as a design aesthetic in the, the last few years. So acknowledging all the other people who've, who do deconstructed work, I'm not... I'm not saying that, just in the context of sneakerheads in the last few years. Um, but long before, Tinker uh, was kind of deconstructing and exposing the inner workings of their Nike's technology uh, in the Air Max 1 in, in 1986. So they call this the 86. So the Air Max 1 debuted in 87. Why they call this the 86, if you didn't know, this you might have heard of because this was the story around producing this, uh, this version this year in 2023, why is it called the Big Bubble? Why is it called the 86? Why did some people not like this when it first came out? Because they didn't know the full story. Even like OG sneakerheads didn't know the full story of like the purpose of this and the purpose of the shape. Um, because generally speaking, Air Maxes, Air Max 1s have a smaller exposed bubble unit and they look like this. These are the clot Air Max 1s. I'll get in side sidebar on these. I'll come back to it. I don't want to ruin my flow here. But sidebar on these in a moment. Um, they look like these because when 86, when the prototypes came out and a few people, they did ad campaigns, a few select people were seated Air Max 1s. They looked like this, but in cold weather, the bubble 
was bursting and cracking. So they had to reduce um, the size of the bubble or the exposure, redo the midsole with different cushioning there, not put as much stress directly on the bubble there, let the foam take up some of the, the pressure points. Uh, hence the different design lines versus this. This is the original kind of, this is like the prototype model of the Air Max 1 in 86 prior to its release. They recalled a bunch of shoes and then officially debuted more like this in 87. So that's why this one's called the 86 Big Bubble because this was essentially the prototype. Now in 2023, we have the technology they can return to the original kind of prototype look. And if you watch some of those videos from the Nike archives, there's an original, original prototype that doesn't look like this at all. It's like kind of yellow. It's very different. But um, this was the original uh, production run. I think it was like a lot of shoes had to be recalled in the hundreds of thousands. So kind of wild uh, that they did that massive recall. But yeah, so there you go. There's the, the brief history of the Air Max 1 plus the brief history of of this specific 86 big bubble um, and why it is the way that it is. Okay, back to this underrated shoe in my opinion. I kind of low-key don't want to tell you all this, not that my not that I have a huge influence. I you know, you know, sometimes people leave comments saying they cop things because of my video. I appreciate that. So I have a little a little bit of sway. Someone throw me a sponsorship or some free shoes. Um, but so I almost don't want to say this, but like this shoe was sitting for cheap when it released, still is sitting for cheap. The cheap, like this is such a dope shoe. It's not the most comfortable, not the most comfortable, but this is a dope looking shoe. And I do not know why it's just sitting. Anyways, if you don't have a pair, look at your size at the various after aftermarket platforms. And um, this and the Bacons, man, two Air Maxes that I think are just... I think it's a they're a steal like these are only going to creep up over time and uh they both released 2021 around air max day in the spring um and even back then that was kind of maybe the tail end of the sneaker hype but it was still in the sneaker hype bubble uh pun intended and they just didn't sell that or i guess they sold out in most places but didn't uh resale prices were low on these and these are just iconic remakes or remakes of like grails and uh, they're great shoes and they're just sitting for the cheap. Like, again, if I had the money in the room, I would have like probably two pairs of these, two pairs of the Air Max, Bacon, Air Max Bacons. If you don't have pairs of either, I suggest you check out the prices. Uh, this is like the only Air Max one I own. So very stoked to now own this one. These are kind of my school colors, the UW Badgers. That's also why I like these um, Air Max ones. Uh, they have this sloped shape with the midsole because they were runners and you kind of, you know, you you don't, uh, runners aren't constantly on their heels. So it's kind of sloped forward for uh, running design. It's got the old school printing of the shoe size on the, in, on the inside collar, uh, which they've been doing more recently. It's got a uh, soft liner on the tongue, nylon tongue here dope shoe made these are made in vietnam really cool these were manufactured last year in 2022 it looks like really cool there's the inside i really like the feel of these it's real soft i get this there's a little ink right there on the toe so a little quality control issue i don't get too bent out of shape about that but just a super clean shoe um, uh, if you're at all, I think if you're both a sneakerhead, of course, I think most people are into these most, not all, uh, maybe you already have a pair, but if you're a sneakerhead, most of you recognize the, you know, this shoe and its importance and it's a great looking shoe aesthetically. And a lot of you have these in your collection, but if you're just kind of starting out and you want to know like, what's are what are good pairs to have, uh, in my collection, I don't have a ton of money or a ton of room to have 50 pairs of shoes. But if I were going to own like, you know, I don't know, five to 10, um, this I definitely would eye as being one of them. This is a great everyday wear. We'll go with lots of stuff. Uh, I think, I think it's a good staple. Like they're not going to, this isn't a perennial, at least this version of it. They come up with different Air Max one colors all the time. There's different collabs, but 
They're, they are going to retro this. They will retro this, but they're not going to retro it every year. So this is a once every three, four, five year thing. And this would be good to have in your collection, in your rotation. That's my opinion. Uh, this is the original colorway too. I think back then a blue came out shortly after the red one. And I, I think there's rumors of a blue one dropping here eventually. But uh, yeah. Ooh, yeah, nice. I think 11 and a half was the way to go. I think a 12 would have looked too big on my foot. I got plenty of toe room. I haven't stood up yet, but I can tell these will be good. They are kind of a wide looking shoe, but I would say they are not like... The platform I can feel like isn't exceptionally wide. And I wouldn't say it's a narrow shoe. At least for me, I don't have super wide feet. I have average feet, I think. Um, so I would say, but even though these kind of look wide and chunky, I would say they're not. I think these are normal shoes and I have a normal width foot. Uh, so yeah, no extra set of laces. I don't think the originals came with extra laces. So that's kind of par for the course here i do think these would look uh, pretty sick with with a pair of red laces though they would look nice and yeah shouts to the you know one of the greatest sneaker designers of all time tinker um and the pompadou building for this inspiration can you imagine he doesn't take that trip or that building isn't designed you know we would never have Air Maxes, like think about like, it's kind of wild when you start to, you know, philosophically think about determinism, fate, all that stuff, like just the little things that make now 1986, now 2023, like all these years later, they're retroing this shoe and there's, there's a million different Air Maxes all because of this. Um, I, if you're at all uh, into design at, if you're at all into design, um, you probably already know about the Netflix series, uh, Abstract. But if somehow you're just kind of like casually into design or want to learn more about it, or maybe you are a designer and you just haven't heard of it somehow, you've been under a rock, I highly recommend checking out the Netflix series, Abstract. Episode one features Tinker Hatfield. So both sneakerheads or people into design or both, check out that series and check out that episode. Um, it's a really good series. And of course, the Tinker Hatfield episode is very good as well. This is a great shoe. Uh, let's see here. I don't know how comfortable these will be. I always, I feel like in the forefoot area of Air Maxes, they're a little uncomfortable. Um, just in general, I don't find Air Maxes to be that comfortable. We'll see with this OG Air Max 1 how comfortable it is, but I do not find them particularly comfortable. I think some of the most comfortable shoes are the are various New Balances. Uh, the Vomero 5s, if you want a Nike shoe, I think are very comfortable. And the, what's the, what's the Nike runner with a bubble in the front? The Tempo Next or the Tempos, Zoom Tempos, um, Air Zoom Tempos. Those are very comfortable too. Um, and, and there's some Adidas. I, I'm not as familiar with all the various comfortable Adidas models. Most of you would be more familiar with me. I just like the the kind of the 2000s and 90s looking Adidas trainers, and those are only mildly comfortable, but I like the way they look. So I'm not as familiar with comfortable Adidas shoes. Some Asics are comfortable. Anyways, I don't want to sidetrack. Let's give these a rating. Um, definitely, these are definitely an eight. I'm trying to think, do these make a nine? Uh, these are really good. These are really, really good on foot. I've never put these, I've yet to have these on foot and seeing them on foot and these like red and white are my color. I really like them. Um, it's just a good looking shoe. You can't go wrong with these. Uh, do I give these a nine? I don't think I give these quite a nine. I give these as close to nine as po possible. I give these an 8.9. I give these an 8.9. I really, really, really like them. I just, I don't know if I give these a 9.0. Do you know the Air Max ones that I wanted forever? I missed out on, on when they dropped and I wanted them forever and I resisted. Now I'm glad I, I did because I got these and these are the real thing. But there are those like, um, the, the sketch versions of these. They were the Air Max ones, but they had like marker drawn on all the, and they were an homage to the design process. Uh, 
and I really thought those were cool. Some people think they were gimmicky and stupid and corny, whatever. I thought they were pretty cool. I never, I missed out on them and the resale, I just didn't want to pay resale prices for them. And um, if you know about them, yeah, drop a comment. Drop a comment if you liked them or not. But I really wanted those. They did another version where it was kind of like a CAD drawing or is more of like a technical drawing version. I wanted the marker one where all the red spots were like drawn in with red Sharpie. Uh, and it was like a sketch, sketch to shelf. I think that's what they were called, sketch to shelf pack. And uh, I wanted those for so long, never got them. And for the moral of the story is I'm not mad about it because now I got these and I think these are slightly better than those. The real thing is slightly better than those those ones. One thing that I thought of that I'll add quick is just that like why is this such a good shoe? I kind of alluded to just how retro's in. I mean it's very aesthetically pleasing with the the strip of red down the middle. The red swoosh catches the eye set against the white backdrop and uh, air sole. I've worn these now for a few seconds after I finished the video. Um, but what's funny to me is just like being a kid from the 80s, a young kid from the 80s. I never liked the 80s. I didn't think the 80s. I, I'm nostalgic about the 90s where I was a little older in the early early 2000s. I was never nostalgic about the 80s. I was just a young kid. And the, all this stuff, like this looked old. I'm like, my favorite Air Max is the Air Max Plus. Um, looked cool at the time when it came out. Very futuristic, very different. Nothing like this. The Air Max Plus looked nothing like this. And this did remind me of like just the 80s parents, older people. And so now fast forward to 2023. Now this is cool, retro, vintage, um, hi historic, iconic. Now it's cool. But just like back then, it was, uh, this was just like such an 80s. It was from the 80s. Like it's like an 80s exercise shoe. Um, so just funny how things change. Uh, great shoe though, but yeah, I was always like growing up was Air Max Plus was like the coolest shoe ever. Still is. It's still my favorite Air Max, but uh, yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching. I know there was a lot of videos out there about these. So if you watched the end and watched my video, I really appreciate you. Please subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Hit the notification bell for new unboxings and wear reviews. And maybe we'll delve into some other, you know, clothes or what, whatever. Um, thank you so much. Hit the like button if you thought it was a good video. Or don't if you didn't think it was a good video. Peace. Till next time.